Hi there, hope you are doing good. Today I want to show you how to translate automatically 100% of your Webflow website using Lindys. Lindys is a software as a service or SaaS that connects to Webflow. All the existing content and new content, content updates will be detected and the translations will be available instantly into all the languages you've selected. And the best part? This whole process can be done in 10 minutes using a high-quality cloud AI translation. This type of tool is automatic, but it still delivers high-quality translations thanks to its use of translation models and the optimizations made on the HTML parsing. If you are keen to learn more, be sure to check out our website. So, what are we going to cover today? First, we'll show you how to create a new account and register your domain on Lingeist to get your translation API key. Next, we'll set up and configure your multilingual URLs with your Webflow domain. After that, we'll set up the language switcher with flags and language names. And finally, I'll demonstrate how you can edit the translations right from the Webflow frontend. We'll also visit the Lingeist dashboard, advanced settings, and the service prices, of course. Let's get started. In this first sequence, we'll create an account, or you can register a new one. Lingeist offers a one-month free trial for every new domain registered with up to 600,000 translated words. On each account, you can add several domains, but each domain will require a separated membership. That's still pretty interesting because the automatic translation is basically 90% less expensive than a pure human translation. So, we'll use it to translate our Webflow demo website. Here I'll copy the domain of my Webflow website I want to translate. The registration of the domain is required because at the end I will get a key to authorize the translation on my website, and I will also need to set up my multilingual URLs. After that, I can select my website platform, here that's Webflow, but it works in the same on all cloud-hosted CMS. As you can see, there are many of them. Then I'll select my original and target translated languages. Let's add one or two more languages here, for the example. Currently, there are 85 languages available, so you have plenty of choice depending on your business location or what is your customer target. Okay, here we go, and when I save the configuration, I have a detailed documentation and video of how to install it step by step on my Webflow website. Well, this is what I'm going to do in the next sequence. So, my domain registration is done on Lingai's side, now I'm going to set up my domain to activate the multilingual URLs using what is called Domain DNS. This is the most technical part, if you've never tried that before, but I'll guide you step by step. Not to mention that I'll add a link in the video description to ask for a free installation and to the documentation. The DNS domain setup where you determine the multilingual URLs. For example, for a Spanish page, I want the subdomain to be es.mywebsite.com. And as you can guess, I need to do it for each language. First I'll show you how to set up the name DNS entries you can see here, then we'll see how to add the text entry with the verification key. Now I'm opening my Domain DNS Manager. This is usually located in your Domain Manager or sometimes directly in your CMS configuration. As you can see, I have several entries here because I've already registered some languages, but let's register the Vietnamese now as it's a new one. First, I need to register a new DNS entry by clicking here and selecting name type. From the Lindice dashboard, I will copy the name entry name, paste it in the name field. Now I'm going back to the Lindice dashboard and copy the content here, also called target. Now I can say I have made a DNS configuration for a new language of my Webflow website. The operation needs to be repeated for each language, of course. To finish the domain DNS configuration, it is required to add the text entry with the validation key. Again, I'm adding a new entry, this time it's text type. I'm going back again to the Lingeist dashboard. Copy the text entry name, then copy the text content here. Paste it and save. It's finished now for the domain configuration. Usually you'll need to wait 30 minutes or so to be effective, but you can check the registration validation from the Lingeist dashboard. Now let's see how to add the language switcher to the storefront in the next sequence. 
In this quick sequence, we'll copy in your Webflow header part, the link to the file that will load the language switcher. The language switcher is the flags with language names displayed on your website public side. From the Lindai's dashboard settings, I have access to the script link. I need to copy it and paste it wherever your CMS is loading the scripts in the page's headers. It's located in a part called Code Injection on Webflow. So, from my Webflow admin, I will navigate to Sites, Settings, Custom Code, then I'll find the part called Head Code. And here it is I have a text area where I can paste the link to the Lingai script. The script and therefore the language switcher will be loaded on all my website pages. And that's it. The translation is now fully operational on my website. Now let's configure the language switcher design and navigate to my multilingual website. In the Lindai's dashboard you can set up the language switcher display, the flags, language names. To access the setup use the settings menu, then language flags display. On the right part you have the current configuration preview, like it will appear on your Webflow frontend. You can see the language with flags comes with three display layouts options. Side-by-side -side displays all the flags and language names one after another. The side-by-side -side layout is pretty convenient if you have a small number of languages on your domain. Let's test another one. Then you have the drop-down. Okay, looks like a menu. Finally, there's a pop-up option. I think it's better in my case because I have numerous languages. Let's scroll down and check the advanced plugin options. There are many options, among them, we can see the possibility to use alternate flags per language, color, border, mouse hover options, etc. I see this is mainly an option to adapt the front-end rendering to your Webflow website design. For the example I'll change from pop-up to drop-down. And let's say I change the position and use square flags. Save and it's done. The new layout is instantly applied to your website, let's check that. Now on the public side of my Webflow website I can refresh the page and use my wonderful language switcher. All my website is translated and I can navigate everywhere, all types of content are handled and translated in multiple languages. For example here I have my Webflow website with a dynamic CMS elements. I can also change language and navigate inside it. Note that multilingual URL are automatically generated along with language tags and alternate URLs. That is the guarantee of a fully indexed multilingual content. Now that you've seen how easy it was to make this automatic translation, I'll show you how to edit those translations from the Webflow frontend and create some translation rules. Before jumping to the conclusion, I want to quickly show you an overview of the Lingai's features. For that, I'm going back to my Lingai's dashboard. I can check some traffic statistics. It's not as powerful as Google Analytics, but it gives an idea quickly what languages are the most used. As you can see, there are many tools here. The most important to me is the front-end translation editor. Here it's currently called Live Editor. Let's click on it and open Webflow, select a language. I'll pick French here and loading it. Okay, I have the website open in French, but with the translation tool loaded in the top right corner. If I open it, I see three buttons, the computer that is the navigation mode to navigate and translate another page. The addition mode, the pen, the one we'll use it now and the code icon to edit meta information such as translated page title for search engine. You can edit anything you want on your page, that's really easy. Everything includes text, image links, all your Webflow HTML front-end content, including app content. I'm editing a menu in this page for example, I have clicked on the text. Edit and save it. And it's applied all over my website. It's as easy as that. Let's go back to the dashboard now. After the statistics, you have a part called rules. 
We have dedicated videos for this part, but basically that's a super powerful tool where you can add translation rules that apply all over your Webflow website at certain conditions. For example, it's possible to exclude a text from translation here, or to replace a translation by a custom text. I can also exclude part of my website from translation using URL or HTML selector. All those rules have their own options to target the content you want. Now what do I see on the dashboard other than rules, I can also see my translations as a list here and play with filters and edit them. That's a possibility. There is also the URL translation list, same as the translation listing but only for the URL. And you'll find the translations of the links and the images. Finally, I have the settings, this is where my domain is set up. Note that I can add a language anytime I want, this is the advantage of using a SAS. Now let's jump into the conclusion. As a conclusion, I would like to show you the pricing model. This is based on the translation volume. It goes from 200,000 words to unlimited and from $15 up to $45 per month. This is less expensive with a yearly subscription, and you have one month free per domain. The main advantage of using Lingai's translation tool is that the quality is really good considering it's 90% less expensive than a manual translation. Also, new content is always and instantly translated and SEO friendly. So, that's also great for business because your Webflow website will grow in terms of content volume and content quality. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you're watching this video from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay informed about new features and ask us any question using the comments. And of course, you'll find all the useful links we've talked about in the description. See you soon for another video.